name is Jake Stein. I'm the uh, co-founder and chief operating officer of RJ Metrics. Uh, we are a business intelligence and database analytics software company. Uh, we sell to companies in e-commerce, uh, software as a service, web 2.0, uh, anyone who's driving uh, transactions through the internet using a database driven website. Uh, the company started out uh, with myself and my co-founder Bob. We were uh, colleagues at a venture capital private equity firm in New York called Insight Venture Partners. And uh, that firm invested in growth stage software and internet companies. Uh, a lot of companies like the, the customers that we have now. I think there's, there's actually a few lessons that you know, I, I take out of my experience there and, and transitioning uh, to what I'm doing now. Uh, first of all is how great, at least in my experience, it is to start a business that scratches your own itch. Uh, so we faced a problem that we were doing the same analysis over and over again. So what we knew before starting the company is there is at least one company in the world that needs this and is paying in terms of people's time to accomplish this. So whenever you have an idea for a business, it's always like, well, I'd probably use it. Maybe my friends said they'd use it. My mom says it's a great idea. But unless you actually know firsthand that someone is spending money to solve this problem and you thought of a better way to solve it, it's kind of a great way to just eliminate a little bit of risk. And then also you're in a great position to decide, well, I want to solve this problem. Do I solve it this way? Do I solve it that way? I mean, there's a million decisions all along the way. So kind of putting yourself in the shoes of where you were you know, six months ago or a year ago is very helpful for kind of making those sorts of decisions. Um, beyond that, I think uh, one of the great things about the type of job I had there when I would advocate for you know, people who were in the same position I was, you know, coming out of college looking at a job that might be a springboard onto entrepreneurship uh, is uh, what I call deal flow. So at the, the venture firm that I worked at, um, we looked at, you know, I personally talked to hundreds of companies a year and the firm looked at tens of thousands of companies every year. Um, and just by virtue of that number, even if, um, you know, I wasn't doing my job well, you couldn't kind of help but notice, well, it seems like all the companies, you know, that are, you know, being really careful about money or driving their, uh, driving their, the operation of their business by metrics uh, or doing, you know, certain other sets of things, they seem to be doing well. And other companies seem to be just kind of uh, making a lot of noise but not really producing. Uh, so I think, Having a job, or at least trying to transition your job into a way where you can look at a lot of other people and learn from all their mistakes and learn from their successes too, um, is a great way to save a lot of time and kind of accelerate your career and hopefully help you avoid some of those pitfalls and, and seize on those successful tactics sooner. I'd say probably the biggest thing that's positively impacted our, our revenue and sales has been just kind of our business model, which is uh, monthly subscription fees with no implementation fee, no long-term commitment. Uh, I think we're, we're far from the first to realize that kind of software as a service and subscription uh, is a little bit easier sell than kind of a big upfront fee. That makes everything easier because it's constantly revenue coming in the door. It can you know, fund our hiring new people, it can fund our marketing, pays our rent, uh, all, all, all sorts of nice things come out of that. Um, probably the other most important thing we've found in terms of customer acquisition is just going absolutely nuts doing everything we can making our customers happy. Um, we have actually not lost a customer yet because you know there, there's one of our customers who's kind of winding down their business so that that will be the, the first one that we lose. Um, but everyone else and I'm constantly asking them you know are you happy is there anything else you need. Uh, not that we want to be kind of an outsourced service provider because that's that's not our business model uh, but providing a very high level of service is something that I think is extremely important both in terms of our customer retention uh, but, you know, we've spent under $1,000 on marketing so far, and we have maybe 15 customers, call it. Um, almost all of them have been through referrals, through our network, through our customers saying great things about us to the people that they know in their networks. Um, and I think that's a big part of what we're going to do going forward, and uh, I think it's a very important part of kind of our strategy and, and what's enabled us to, to sign up new customers. Probably the most important thing that I just kind of ask myself whenever I find myself drifting off is like, is this the best possible thing I could be doing right now? Um, and that takes different forms, like, you know, if there's a, a customer that I'm about to sell, obviously following up with them is probably the highest, highest ROI uh, action for me to take. Or if it's fixing something that's broken for a customer, if they found a bug or they want a new feature or something like that. Um, but it's, it's iterating, it's just kind of deciding, this is how I spent this last week, was that time really, really that valuable? Um, and just kind of looking at it and trying to do a better job from week to week. Uh, and you know, sometimes I don't do a great job. Uh, but I think by and large, I'm pretty happy with, with the way that we spend our time. Um, and I think it's also one other thing that I, I worry about is just, it's very easy to you know, think, uh, this is a startup, we have to really go to town and let's work 100 hours a week. Um, but I think the quality of the output is something that 
is a lot more important to focus on. And I think I tend to look at inputs in terms of, well, you have to work really hard, you have to spend a lot of time, you have to really throw yourself into it. But at the end of the day, um, you know, all that really matters is the outputs and if you're being effective with the time that you do put in. I think the, the important things are to figure out what your priorities are and then actually prioritize them. So, you know, every day I make a list of the two or three things that I absolutely want to get done and then I try not to do everything else on my list until that happens. Uh, I'm far from satisfied, but I feel absolutely successful. I think that, you know, I'm doing exactly what I want to do, which is what, not something that a lot of people can say. You know, if I thought of every job in the world, I literally think this is the most interesting thing. Um, so I feel very blessed and very successful in that respect. Uh, in terms of our business options, uh, I don't really have a number in mind that, you know, if we hit $20 million in sales, that'll be a success and I'll be able to retire then. Um, it's very important to me to have options. Uh, I want to be in a position to have a, a company that larger companies want to buy or that, you know, maybe it's not going to be big enough to IPO, but it's a company that's on a path to be something that would be attractive to an investor. Um, or it's a company that just pays me a very high salary and lets me continue doing something that I love for a long time. Um, I don't have as much of a like one fixed goal. You know, I want to become rich. I want to be, uh, you know, I want to have a, a fantastic company with lots of uh, happy customers and lots of employees who, you know, are, are happy with their jobs. Um, but there's not like a, I don't have numbers, specific numbers in my mind that once we do that, I'll be successful. Because also, I don't really want to ever hit a point where I think, all right, what do I do now? You know, if I'm, if I'm still enjoying it, things are getting better, and I'm making a positive impact, I don't really see a, a reason to, to stop that. I'm a huge fan of Warren Buffett, uh, and I think a lot of the ways that he thinks about businesses are applicable to any business, whether it's in technology or, you know, railroads or anything like that. Uh, so thinking about what is going to make our business have a more durable competitive advantage uh, in terms of uh, competition and in terms of retaining our customers. I think things, if you think about things that way, a lot of times it makes explanations simpler. So if you think about taking some shortcut that may be going to make us more money today, uh, you know, if you're long-term greedy, which is an expression he likes to say, uh, you know, what is going to, if this, is, if this business is the only business you could own for the next hundred years and your, your kids were going to inherit it and their kids were going to inherit it from you, uh, what would you do? And I think that makes a lot of decisions a lot easier because any shortcut you're going to take, if it's the hard way, if it's something that, you know, maybe it'll, you know, give you a quick pop, but maybe it'll, it'll be better in the long term. It just makes things a lot easier and also makes you think, you know, what, what are my priorities here? You know, is this going to mess up my work-life balance? Is this going to, you know, potentially piss off some of our customers and make the other ones happier? Like, if you have a clear thing that you optimize for, I think, uh, I think it makes a lot of decisions easier. Before I actually went to go work at a, a VC firm, I would have guessed that, you know, every interesting technology company is located in Silicon Valley. Uh, I, you know, I think that's the popular perception from a lot of people. Uh, and one of the things that I learned having talked to tons of technology companies all around the country and the world is that some of the most interesting ones are not located in the, you know, the very buzz heavy areas uh, and are maybe not the most well known but they're doing a great job doing what they're doing. They're maybe more business focused than consumer focused uh, and you know, they're located in Omaha, Nebraska but they you know, do a great job, their customers love them and they make tons of money. Um, so I think that gave me a little bit more understanding about maybe not going to a place that was as well known as a technology hub. I think since I moved to, to Philadelphia, I've been really impressed with the community here, the support from things like the PSL and the other groups, uh, and just kind of the, it's like, it's like a nice medium. Uh, whereas I feel like in uh, maybe New York and other places, it's, it's kind of hard to be noticed. It's kind of hard to, um, you know, get a feeling for the rest of the people in the community. Whereas now, you know, I go to a PSL event, I know, you know, half the people there, uh, people are constantly, you know, if I write a blog post, someone will send me an email, so I just had that same problem. Uh, here's maybe, you know, something that you can think about. This is how we solved it, at least. Uh, or, you know, things like that where it's a lot more personal. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's some great investors in the area who, uh, uh, people like uh, Josh Kaufman at First Round Capital or Colin Evans uh, have made us introductions to their portfolio companies that are now customers of ours. Uh, so it's, it's a great community, and I think it's, our company is better because of it, uh, because, because we're located here and not in a place where, uh, you know, there's as much of an echo chamber, where people who are constantly doing the same thing and constantly reinforcing each other that your ideas are the same as my ideas, so they must be great. Here it's a little bit more free thinking, and you can uh, kind of go your own path in an easier way.